All right, here we go. Yesterday at this time, we did AFC grades. We graded every team in the AFC that we think matters. We're going to do the same now. Gridiron grades for the NFC. J-Mac, here we go. Uh, Colin, I'll start, since you struggled so much yesterday with this, I'll start you off with a layup. The Philadelphia Eagles. I think they're the A+. Plus. Yes. Yesterday, I gave Jacksonville an A+, plus because of their growth. Philadelphia, uh, I mean, they last started 4-0, like 15, 16 years ago. Led all of their games by 17 points. They've come out strong early. So, obviously, on paper, they've got a plan. And then they execute it. And then in the second half, they do as well. Yeah. Like, unlike Green Bay, which is good early, not late. Both halves, they've obviously got a plan. Uh, they make the schematic changes necessary at half. They're an A+. Plus. Dallas Cowboys lose their quarterback in week one. The sky is falling. And they got two dubs. I'd give them a B. Too many penalties. Okay. Um, but they are 2-1 and one with a backup quarterback. Uh, they've increased their scoring and offense each week with a backup quarterback. Uh, and they also lead the NFL with sacks. But, again, they don't feel disciplined and buttoned up. Way too many penalties. Um, O-line still a little bit of a work in progress. They get a B. I can't believe we're doing the Washington Commanders after not doing the Jets yesterday. But the Commanders, one of the worst teams in the league. How you grade them out? Uh, D. They've allowed 15 oh. sacks, most in the NFL. Their defense has one takeaway. They have a defensive coach and good defensive personnel. Almost a failing grade, but I don't like to fail students early. We're only <laughs> in the first semester. The 2-1 and one fraudulent New York Giants. How do you give them a grade? Uh, I would say C+. Plus. I mean, I do think Daniel Jones is better than last year. But they have the 30th ranked passing offense. Uh, they only have seven big plays. And I and I know, listen, I know I'm beating up on Daniel Jones, but at some point, your young quarterback has to be the solution because this is not baseball. There's a salary cap. All these teams are imperfect. Burrow got to a Super Bowl with a bad O-line last year. I'm not saying you have to get to the Super Bowl. You can't be 30th in passing. Like there is some talent there. You do have a great left tackle. So I give them a C plus. How about Brady and the two and one Bucks? They've had a lot of injuries, Colin. Do you give them kind of an incomplete here? You're um, allowed to give that, by the way. I would say a B plus. Oh. Um, they've overcome a lot. Their offense, only three offensive touchdowns. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Chris Godwin, uh, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Donovan Smith, the left tackle. I thought it was very obvious last week against Green Bay. Folks, the Chargers aren't going to look the same without Rashawn Slater. Like, you lose a, gr a run enough Donovan Smith's great. He's certainly solid to good. So I, I give him a B-plus for overcoming. Even though it's not pretty with them, optically, they don't score much. They've overcome a lot. All right, your favorite team in the league, the Green Bay Packers, who are 2-1, and one, I should remind you before you answer. A C. <laughs> They're 27th <laughs> ranked offense with Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. And they have five giveaways, so they've been a little sloppier. They're not scoring a lot of points. Aren't you concerned a little? No. You're not, not at all. Not at all. Wow, not at all. I mean, look at the receivers. You just said Tampa's receivers have been all banged up. He's got a bunch of new guys, two rookies out there. Romeo wow, Dubs you, and You Christian and I Watson. see the Packers totally. I know. That's what makes it so beautiful. Mm. Uh, but we can move on. Minnesota Vikings who are 2-1, and one, kind of lucky. They did smash the Packers in week one, but I don't know what the hell's going on with them the last two weeks. All right, they're a B. They beat Green okay. Bay handily. They're 2-1. and one. The only loss came on the road, Monday Night Football at Philadelphia, the best team in the NFC. They're also the second least penalized team in the league. They're healthy. They thumped a good team in Green Bay, a team you like. So it's like, listen, they didn't, again, in college football, I'd be worried if Georgia was behind an average team. But in the NFL, you're behind average teams. They were behind Detroit. I look at it and think they came back and won. That was a nice comeback from behind win. You, 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 a, the a NFL's, near loss for the Vikings. That, that scared loss. the hell out of me. Dude, I had them in Survivor, and they were okay. trailing well, like 90% of the game. Well, that explains your angst. They did not cover the spread as well. Uh, let's go to the Chicago <laughs> Bears, <laughs> who we kind of slammed here. Justin Fields, they are 2-1, and one, headed toward maybe 3-1, and one, Colin. C-. minus. Oh. Only team with more rushing yards than passing yards. In all three games, they've had 105 yards or fewer passing. You don't have to be great at it, but let's be honest. You've got to be a threat. And so now on film, people are watching this offense, and they're not even a threat to run. So I think it's going to get harder, not easier, going forward. Speaking of threats, the Detroit Lions, only one and two, but, man, they are frisky. Oh, I think it's a B plus. Ooh. I think, listen, I, I, I know they're one and two, but their offense 
is number two scoring offense. You know, the other thing, it was easy to dump on Jared Goff when he left. Can we be honest about this? At least at home. Jared Goff's been excellent. Yeah, indoors. He's great. Well, okay. He plays over half his games indoors. Well, no, he plays Minnesota every year, so he plays more than half his games indoors. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, i, I got to be honest. It's easy to just relegate him, like it's English soccer, to the lower division. I think Jared Goff, we got to do a Jared Goff topic. That'll move the meter. I think he's played better than even Detroit thought he would play. No I think he's been it. very good at hey, home. Their offensive coordinator has been phenomenal. That, that was Sewell, ben Johnson, I never heard of the guy. Sewell's a home run at tackle. Jeff Okuda, the cornerback out of Ohio State, played extremely well. Locked up Justin Jefferson last yeah, week. Yeah, no, I think I think, uh, I think Detroit's interesting. Uh, L.A. Rams, who you, I think, had winning the Super Bowl back-to-back at the beginning of the season. How would you no, I didn't. Out? I had Buffalo winning it. Oh, yeah, the, Buffalo over the Rams. So right. I have the Rams as a B. They have major injuries, worst rushing offense in the NFC, and Matt Stafford leads the, is it NFL or NFC? NFL with five picks. So they've been sloppy, but a lot of it is I'll give them a high grade of B because I don't think people realize that for Cooper Cup, it's a little bit of a mess at wide receiver. Let's go to the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, your man crush, Lynch and Shanahan. I think they're one and two, and uh, they got a tough one this weekend. How do you grade out their first three games? B plus. Garoppolo will be better. More snaps. Defense, only team holding their opponents under four yards a play. This is a great defense. They're not healthy offensively. I worry about Trent Williams being out. But again, I think they've played, you know, we've they've had two quarters. They're already on their second quarterback, so it's not easy. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. I'd probably go D plus. Ooh, ouch. They've lost seven of their last nine games. Their third down offense with Kyler is awful. Their defense is awful. Right now, they have the worst scoring defense in the league. So you got to give me something. Like, you can say what you want about Chicago, but they're playing defense. Rokon Smith is an unbelievable player. You got to give me something to grab onto. What do I grab onto in Arizona? The quarterback, the coach, the defense, third down. What do I grab onto? There's yep. nothing to grab onto. DeAndre Hopkins coming back in like two weeks. Well, yeah, <laughs> three, he, I think. But he's not there now. Yeah, right, right, right. And we could wrap up with this Seattle Seahawks. Remember, I told the audience I would shave a Seahawks insignia in my head <laughs> if they had a winning record at the end of the season. That is the best bet I've ever made in my life. There's no chance they will be 9-8. and eight. I not. would give them a C. I think they've been what we thought, but they beat Denver, and they were competitive against Atlanta. I mean, they're 28th in total offense, so you know where they're going to draft first. They have a two first, two second, and two fourths. They're going to literally change their franchise. This is the biggest draft in the history of the Seahawks. Two first, two seconds, and I believe two fourths. So after the fourth round is a lot of finger crossing, but most NFL GMs believe your first round pick's a pro bowler, your second round pick is a starter, your third and fourth round picks start eventually fairly soon. So Seattle's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elite picks. So Big. my only thing with that is historically the Seahawks have done better drafting in the mid rounds. They've yes. kind of blown their early picks. Uh, I'm calling it up here on the internet. Like I know, some I know. Shaky picks in the first round in the last couple years, Colin. I'm trying to be more positive with my hometown team. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.